Okay, so for the final class, uh, here's uh, this, the various topics I want to hit, uh, wrap up on YouTube, because um, we've spent a little while on YouTube because it is a big, complex topic with a lot of nuance, and I think it really is one of the important topics to, to talk about nowadays regarding social media. So when we last left off, we were starting to upload a video, so we still need to talk about optimizing, or let's call it sort of this way, SEO uh, for YouTube. So optimizing your video for views, because you may, may have made an amazing video, but no one, uh, no one finds it, no one watches it and such. We'll cover also monetization, making money on YouTube. And then getting views on YouTube. Then we'll go on to talk about uh, podcasts. Uh, that's going to be SoundCloud. So they're uh, hardware, software, and uh, then lastly, I'll also mention Patreon. So, making money online. So those are the big ideas that we'll, that we'll cover with our time here. We're, we'll get back to YouTube first. Uh, so, have any of you, since these two weeks that we've been talking about YouTube, have any of you kind of experimented or played around with YouTube on your own besides class? Uh, okay. Uh, great, couple people, 10 points for you, minus 10 for everyone else. You need to practice this stuff. Uh, if you don't practice it, it doesn't stick, and if it doesn't stick, then you won't, you won't do it. And I often see people that they're very gung-ho about these topics when they take the class, and then they try it, and they're very up-to-date with it on weeks or a couple of months, and then start to fall off a little bit, and then they don't do it anymore, and then they forget all about it, and then you don't get the benefit of social media if you're not active. So what I'm going to do is log into the account that I created last time. So you can do this also, youtube.com, and we'll sign in if you have an account Okay, so I've signed into this account, and like I said previously, uh, there is the consumer side of YouTube uh, and then the creator side of YouTube. So if you remember, you log in and you first see the consumer side. I'm going to go watch these videos, etc. Does anyone remember how do we get to the uh, creator side of YouTube? Your icon on the top right, yes. And then Creator Studio. So here I go to Creator Studio, and then now I get the interface here uh, of, uh, of me as the creator, where, I, where we looked at all of these various screens. Where, well, I, where I last left off, I had started to upload this video. Um, and there were various nuances of uploading. Since that was last week, I can't show you that screen exactly anymore, but what I can do is go back uh, to edit my video. So the screen doesn't look the same as, as before, but you get the same kind of idea. 
uh, remember from this screen, the important stuff is we've got a title, description, keywords. So there's some statistic about like a million minutes of videos uploaded every second on YouTube. Some sort of crazy statistic that people are uploading lots and lots and lots of content to YouTube on a regular basis. With so much content, uh, you need to then work to get found. And that's what various topics we'll talk about today. So recapping here, the title and this description and keywords, these are all things that help you get found. So having keywords in all of these areas will help you get found. So we'll say craft a title, description, and keywords with topics that help you get found. So ideas. Can you create titles with a question? Can you create titles as a list? Can you create titles of hot topics? Well, what I mean by all of these, it's not just the title. I'm not going to name my video about WordPress. I'm not going to name it something like, you know, um, Top 10 Celebrity Hangouts. You know, I'm not going to put a title that doesn't make sense for my video. So when I say, can you create a title with a question or a list or a hot topic, that assumes the video answers a question. The video is a list of something. The video is about a hot topic. So obviously, the video must relate to the uh, description, the title description keyword. Creating videos on on topics that people are trying to find, uh, like uh, how to tie a tie, uh, how to use WordPress, um, what are uh, the healthiest alternatives to uh, to sugar, those sorts of things. So, depending on your business, uh, can you? Is, are there questions that are commonly asked about your, vi your business? Creating videos on answering questions about your business. So Victor's Bakery. What might questions be that people ask regarding, in general, baking and the kitchen and that sort of thing. Maybe like how to bake a cake. I could have uh, my own video about how to bake a cake. A two minute video series on baking. So this would be, yes, a series, like just one video is not going to make you uh, famous or popular or profitable on YouTube. Uh, you do have to keep up to date and keep um, creating content. Thirty second videos on tips for baking. Okay, lists. Top X best, worst, most amazing, whatever videos. You've probably seen a few of these kinds of videos where 
uh, top uh, 10 ways to uh, invest your money or top five vacation destination spots or uh, the top three or the bottom three worst uh, horror movies of all time. So some sort of video that counts down or counts up to something. The five best WordPress plugins for your business. So if you can create uh, videos like that and the number is completely arbitrary, it's very common top five or top ten, you can do top three, top thirteen, whatever, the number almost doesn't matter. It's just some sort of list that is finite because psychologically uh, people uh, want to watch that kind of video because it's in theory short little bites. Even if it's top ten whatever, <clears throat> the um, the psychology of it is that okay I can watch one and the other and uh, I end up watching the whole the whole video. So example with Victor's Bakery top five alternatives to sugar top ten San Diego donut shops This one of Hot Topics, <clears throat> that one uh, you need help uh, from YouTube itself. But whenever you log into YouTube as a um, as a consumer, it's going to show you a variety of recommended or popular types of videos, recent uploads, and all of that. So. This is also based on your, your own experience of, uh, in browsing. If you were looking at a variety of sports videos, it's going to recommend sports videos. But there's also, let's see, where do they have it? They've also got a, like a trending. They change their interface often, but I know they've, oh, here it is, menu over here. So, trending. I can go to a particular topic and see what kinds of videos are popular on a topic. I can go to trending. And the point of this is, <clears throat> so sort of saying it like jumping on the bandwagon. I'm looking at what, what are these kinds of videos that are that are popular at the moment, and can I make um, a video on that topic, but of course related to uh, my own my own company. You're going to see a variety of professional to amateur types of videos based on what's popular. You might be able to create that kind of video. Visit the trending page on YouTube for ideas, or browse the categories for ideas, and create a video about that topic related to your business. So these are some general ideas. <clears throat> um, for the content of your videos, which then tie back to the description title and keywords. So the video must relate. I show the example of, of, the, of the phone, best low-cost phone on the market, Moto G5 review. So here I hit a variety of keywords, best, low-cost, review, Moto. <clears throat> 
And I, I do have a limit, but it can be a very long title. But I've also got the actual description where there I can write even more. In the title, try to have your main keywords in a concise sentence. And in the description, you can have variations and even more content, even more keywords, even more sentences. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe instead of the word low cost, uh, I, I want to use the word budget or affordable. I'm not going to try to cram in low cost budget and affordable in the title. That'll look awkward and that's a little bit too much of trying to game the system. But in the description, as I organically write a couple more sentences, I could include low cost and budget and affordable in there. And all of that will get found by the search, by the search engine in, 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 in YouTube. So starting to write something here. Check out our full review, and I'll come back to that. So remember, we can add uh, links and such in our description. But here I would say something like, are you looking for a good, affordable smartphone the new Motorola? So there I'm also saying that the manufacturer of the phone the new Motorola, <clears throat> Moto G5 fits the bill and may even be better than an iPhone in some cases. Okay, well there I've hit the keyword of iPhone. Con uh, Regarding sort of like mind share, iPhone has, is the most popular phone. It's not the most best-selling phone or the most powerful phone or that sort of thing. But when people think of, oftentimes when the general public thinks of smartphones, they think right away of iPhone. Even though Android actually has the much larger market share. Like 80% of market share is actually Android phones. But mind share, when you think about smartphones or, or the history of them or or you see celebrities, oftentimes they, there's iPhone is the popular one. So I'm latching onto that keyword here. So I use low cost at the top. I use the affordable here. How would you say, any opinions, how would you also fit in the keyword um, budget? What kind of sentence can we use budget in? Sure. Not a budget breaker. Oh, this sure. will fit in almost any budget. Budget breaker, and yeah, you, you guys are on the right track. So whatever sentence would appeal to you with those keywords, there it is. So I've used three variations, low cost, affordable budget. And I could say, but it's not cheap. It's not cheap quality. So even even hit cheap if people are searching that keyword. Yeah. I just a, can you remind me, is that a live link on the review? The yes. That is a live link. Okay. Yep, after we publish it, this will become an active clickable okay. link. So I'll put that on the notes here again. You can have any number of live links in your description. Let's see. In descriptions, take advantage of the fact that you can put active links in your description. Use them. Now oh, here's a tip. 
use them as landing pages. We've mentioned landing pages before. Uh, does anyone remember what I said about them, or does anyone have an opinion? What's a landing page? Yeah. It would just be a probably page that wouldn't necessarily uh, the regular person would find. It might be a special offer or a special promotion that you have, or a certain product that you want to highlight that would not necessarily be linked to the main website. Exactly. Uh, it's it, the main. It's not a link on the main menu. It's a it's uh, a link that people would find as a special promotion or or whatever so a special page that most people can't find and to further go on that Would you that necessarily not be findable on your website or would it's a lot of the point of that yes that you wouldn't really be able to find it uh, I'll explain some of the reasons of why in just a moment but yes you usually won't find it easily it, it comes from somewhere you land upon it from somewhere else so usually not on the main menu of your site or findable on your site comes from comes from a an external link a special link People land upon it. Used for um, special offers, promotions, and uh, analytics. Let's say there's a link to a certain screen on my site, but the only way you can get to it is via that YouTube description or a Twitter tweet or a Facebook post. Maybe I'm putting links on some of those social networks that you can only get those links when you're following me on social media. I'm not promoting, I'm not putting those links on the main menu or anything like that. Maybe on the site I'm mentioning, don't forget to follow us or like us on Facebook for exclusive content. Well, the only way to get those links, those promotions, those coupons, offers, etc., is if you're following me on the social networks. So that entices people, go follow me on that network. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter, etc. Promote that you get that you can get special things from your social media to entice people to follow you there. In descriptions, if necessary, you can add chapter stops. It might have a different sort of name, but chapter stops, remember, are the time codes that I have the example here. These will become active links. Um, you can have then people jump to different parts of the video. Work best on long videos. With sections in a video. Reason A person might not need to watch the whole video to benefit from it. You can guide people to the quote important stuff I think it's all important but you, you'll see in the stats here people have such a short attention spans uh, you can guide people to the important parts of the video with chapter stops and hopefully they realize the benefit of watching the whole thing. If they see, if you break it down in your description, 
there about the chapter stops and they realize that there's various important things I want to look at this so I'll jump there but this one looks good so I'll jump there maybe I'll just watch the whole video so I'll show you an example of that right here on on my hobby uh, channel here I do a series of videos where I do some like advice on um, upgrading um, this, um, this so this card game uh, you make a deck Up. of cards to, to battle and I have it here uh, this is a 14 minute long video and then I break it down right here but I also use it in terms of okay well here's a question who is this video for what's the win condition how do you win making the changes then I'm using the full name of the actual product and then I mention other things conclusion and then an active link there okay you want the full list because there's 60 cards in this deck and I talk about it and, and, and explain it and such but sometimes people also want to see it broken down as text well I have the link here get the full deck list and more commentary follow that link so if people are interested, well, just show me the changes. I don't want that intro. Just show me the changes. So they click on that. They jump straight to the part that goes in a moment. Uh, so first of all, we've got three court clerics. That, but then people would watch that. These are a one drop, one one. That goes on for a moment. Life and, link. Check and if you've got a Johnny Planeswalker out, this card gets plus one, plus one. And like we said last time, chapter stops are simply you have to figure out what your uh, what your time codes are as, as you watch your own video. It, it tells you down here when you're in Adobe Premiere. Hello and welcome Premiere, to the Tech Review it's Tuesday. It's a better. I like to figure out my time codes in Premiere because you can kind of fast forward and rewind a little bit easier and find the right moment uh, to then say, okay, well at zero. 0.04 is something, so that's my time code that I'll then add. Here. Lastly, uh, keywords, another spot for variations on search terms. So put their budget, and you can repeat these for all. Okay, so that's uh, recapping what we, where we were at last time. Uh, new here is our playlists. Uh, so I'll explain it in a moment. But does anyone know or have an opinion? Well, what's a playlist regarding uh, when it relates to YouTube? What would you think it might be? What would be a playlist in the real world? Music. Music playlist. Well, okay, well, then that means it's a collection of songs. So a playlist on YouTube is a collection of videos. Use playlists. Playlists are collections of videos. Those you upload or you like. You can make playlists. Commonly, as a consumer, a person would go watch a video and add it to their playlist um, so that they can watch it again later. It's all grouped together. I want to find a bunch of videos on how to um, bake a cake. So I'm going to go search on YouTube. I find a bunch of them. I add them to a playlist so then I can come back and watch them as a consumer. As a creator, you can put your videos together on a topic so that people can easily find and watch those playlists, those videos. You should group your videos into topics via a playlist because it 
will make it easier for people to watch more of your videos. This assumes, of course, you've got more than one video on a topic. You could, of course, and will start off with one video in a playlist, but as you create more, they should, you should then populate it with more. So again, let me show you the example here on my, uh, on my hobby account. Um, uh, on over here, I have all of these playlists. So if people are interested in uh, videos about Comic-Con 2018, here's a playlist with five of those videos. If people are interested in this upgraded card game, uh, nine of them there. Here's uh, videos on comic book hauls. If I'm interested in buying comics and such, there's a video, there's a playlist of 19 videos. So notice then it says play all. And what will happen is a person will start off with one video in the sequence, one of 19. They hey, watch this video. Uh, when this video ends, this is a 30 minute San long Diego video. Comic when this one ends, it which is a mini Comic Con here in San Diego. Not as big or famous as San Diego Comic Con is, but it was all bought. about the so, comics and meeting you know, the, the last creators one was, and cosplayers. The next one's coming up next week, and then there was so I got month. the badge. So this will automatically play, book, and so forth. Uh, but sequence let's by take sequence. A look at because, the like comic I said, hall remember that, I that First videos up. automatically have autoplay. Another reason to control autoplay better. The default is that when a person watches a video, YouTube will show you another video. Without you interacting with it, another video will come out. So if you put your videos together in a sequence, it will show that sequence and ignore everyone else's video. I showed previously, I watch a video on a topic, then it'll show me a video on that same topic from some other account. Well, to counteract that, we would use playlists. Yeah. If you have a playlist of five videos and somebody just goes to one of them, not to your playlist, does it link them automatically to the playlist, or do they have to go to the playlist and request the list, or they look at that specific list? Let me confirm that right now. So, um, let me see here. Um, okay, let's see if I can confirm it this way. So, upgrading a Johnny Planeswalker. Okay, so. I did a general search all over YouTube for this for these keywords. These ones appeared over here from this one account and this one and this one and then the one of mine. So I'm not logged into that account. I'm on some other account. So my my video did appear from the results. I know that that one is in a playlist. So I'm going to go see it. And Upgrading the Ajani Wise Counselor Planeswalker deck, but it is then showing another one related. To that, to that topic. Of hey, but when it's VM Campos, videos. So, magic fan. I don't have the full answer yet, but again, creating more of these videos on that topic, grouping them in the playlist will work or will help. And then if they watch this one and it goes to the next one, again, I'm capturing them to watch more of my videos. There's a screen that popped up there that's this is something that more and more websites are doing that they want to give you notifications that there's a new video or that you that you got a like or something this is completely optional I usually put no because I don't want to be inundated with so many notifications this happened that happened I've already got enough to do there's just more to look at, so I personally just say no, or cancel, or block. I watch, well, this is a little off topic, but I know like uh, Pinterest sends me notifications all the time, mm -hmm. and, I, and that's like hundreds of them. I don't know, how do you go, where do you go to get uh, the notification? Oftentimes these networks, somewhere in the settings, so find the, the settings somewhere of Pinterest, uh, oftentimes these networks have some settings for your notifications, and oftentimes they're all turned on. So go over to the settings on Pinterest and probably turn them all off, and then hopefully that'll cut down on what you get from Pinterest. So 
most networks are like that. Unfortunately, that the default, they think you want to get a bunch of emails, and we really don't, so you usually want to go check out the settings and, and fix that. So playlists, uh, control your autoplay better. That is, keep people watching your videos how you want. So creating a playlist is very easy. You can do it either before or after you upload your video. If I go back to the example here, on um, here, let's say this was the screen where I was uploading the video as I'm filling all the stuff out I've got right here, add to playlist. This would give me a list of playlists that I currently have that exist, or obviously here I can see create a playlist. When I click on that, then I can call it whatever I want. So here's another place for you to put in some keywords or ideas of what people are searching for. So if I call this reviews, is that a good or bad name for a playlist? Why good if you said good? Because it's obvious it's a review. Why is it bad if you said bad? Not it's not specific enough. Exactly. I would lean more toward this is a bad title for your playlists because out of context, reviews of movies, of shoes, of what? So tech reviews. Um, and here I, I have the ability to write a pretty long playlist title, so I should take advantage of it and, and really fill it in. Tech reviews you can really use. Now that's too that's too fun. It doesn't have too much. It doesn't have very much of keywords. You know, the, I like that it rhymes, but it doesn't have much meaning for for findability. Uh, tech or we can do honest budget tech reviews. Use. So something like that. And playlists can also have the various levels here I explained last time of public, unlisted, or private. So public, everyone can see it. Everyone can find it via search. Everyone can view it if they've got the link. Unlisted, it's not findable via search, but people can get to it if they've got the link. So if you if you put it as unlisted and then you passed your you passed the um, the list on your on your uh, email newsletter then other people send it to more people it's not really as private as you thought. And private that's the one that uh, no one can really see it unless you approve it via via email but um, most people use private as like that, that no one can see it. It's, it's there in my account, which is how I have this video right now. No one can see it because I'm still preparing it. So I'll do public. I'll create that playlist. And then to answer the question here, yes? And you gave the example while you're preparing. Is that, is that probably the most practical reason to use the private while you're Maybe editing or trying to decide how you want to do your titles or yes. if you want to add more content into your descriptions, those kinds of things. It doesn't pre it relieves the pressure of having to get the whole thing done at once. Exactly. So put it on private if you're still working on it, work in progress, definitely. Um, because really anything you put up on YouTube, you, you want people to see, so there's no real reason to have anything private to control who sees it, but that's the, you're always going to get the genie out of the bottle. You want something online because you want people to see it on YouTube. So, yeah. So then, so then, is it, is it, if I'm, if I'm halfway working, let's say I haven't put the sound in or something like that, and I put it on private, when I finish my... Editing. Editing. Well, when I, when I finish my session, it's midnight, i got to go to sleep, do I post it? As pri it gets posted, and then I can open it and re-edit it later? Is that the way? We, I mean, if you set it to private, you're still posting it, right? When yes. You leave the site. It, yes, you're posting it into your account. It exists okay. online. It's just no one can see it. And once it's posted, you can still edit it. Yes, but okay. when you were saying you're not done with the sound yet, that's a different thing. That's what you're working with okay. in Premiere. Okay, well, 
bad example, but okay. descriptions. Yes, exactly. Descriptions, descriptions and and okay. thumbnail and such. Yes, you uh, you you do the upload. You set it to private. You work on it a bit. Then you save it. It'll get saved to your account here in YouTube. No one can see it. Then you come back, just like I did a moment ago. Remember, it was on my dashboard over here, and I clicked Edit. I can still show it right here. I went back to my account. It wasn't public yet. I did Edit, and that took me back to continue to edit. So I was going on right here. You can have a video in more than one playlist. So. I can create multiple playlists about multiple topics and have the one video on multiple playlists. Within reason, I, I wouldn't really want to create four playlists with just variations of the name of the playlist, but it's the same one video on four playlists. I would want to group them together in terms that make sense. Like on, uh, on my hobby over here, I've got... Uh, so there are nine videos that relate to the game magic then I've also got s some of those in my other video playlist over here magic the gathering so anything related to okay so then I did this series over here about talking about one card so the those videos are in that one playlist but it's also in the video about all of magic and then these about the the decks are also in that one, and these about opening uh, the boxes are also. That's why that one's got 71 videos, so that's all about that topic, but then it's broken into sort of subtopics in its own playlist. That's a way, again, to hit more keywords, more ideas. What are people searching for? People that are searching for um, Crack a Pack, which is opening up the, the packs of the cards. If people are interested in that, there's the videos related to that exactly. If people are interested in the upgrades, there's, there's those videos. If people are interested in me watch watching me play and, and lose online, well, there they are right there. Five. So playlists I would highly recommend to use. Yes. So the videos that you've done of our classes, do you have those on the playlist? Yes. Let me see. They're right over here. So the links that you sent us are, I can look at those next year when I have time to actually review what we did for the last 10 weeks. Yes. <laughs> yep. So everything I've been uploading has been to YouTube, and they've been grouped into playlists. So when you requested the, uh, the link, I'm sending you a uh, a playlist, and so the main account. See, I don't reveal it until the very end, but the main account is YouTube.com/slash instructor Victor C. And I upload all all the videos there, but then I group them into playlists. So our class was right there, social part three, and then when I'm done with today's video, I'll upload it right there. Mm -hmm. Will we continue to have access to these after the classes are over, or do we need to download them too? You will. All of these videos, I mean, you will be continue to still have access. All of these videos will stay there. All the videos I've uploaded so far, I'll never take them down because YouTube has infinite space, basically. And, and if you go to that main account and go to the playlist, you can go all the way back here. I've got 152 playlists. I've got 152 classes that I've uploaded over the years, and you can go all the way back out of curiosity Let's see what's my oldest one here. Back on HTML class. What's the date on that? 2014. So if we were industrious, we could maybe find all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A hundred and fifty playlists. The videos that I have up here are one thousand six hundred forty-two. So, out of curiosity, what's the most popular? Are those are the actual class videos you have on it. Yes. And in, in, in the entirety. Mm-hmm. So, what are we doing here? <laughs> uh, enjoying each other's company. <laughs> <laughs> so how do I get the 
You can go to the uh, the main uh, the main page of youtubecom slash instructor victor. Instructor Victor C. Uh, specifically, then also playlists. Obviously, uh, if you just go to the main account, it's just the sequential stream of all of the videos. Most people would be interested in show me the videos of a particular class, which is under playlists. Um, from the link that you would send us um, from, say, um, the session three, if we go to that link, can we go up one to see a higher list of our session two? Yes. Yes, basically, let's see, let me go look at it over here just to show you what that would look like. Um, you can do this for, for everyone on YouTube. So if I were to go to a particular playlist, let's say I'm looking at the playlist, of, if I sent you the playlist of part three here. All right, so today's okay, topic, well, this is showing part one of YouTube. Of videos of part YouTube. two, the way you would go on oh, social network to see what else is there is you can click it has the various features of the, uh, the other the social account. networks which are uh, so accounts or every video AKA is profiles or pages it, it, it has look like likes it's not underlined it has comments or color or anything. it has shares it has follows account, and then that well, takes you up to the main account and then Exactly. So playlists, and then go find part two, social two, right there. Here's social three from the spring, and we're in social three in the summer. And I try to be smart about their titles, about, first of all, which college, because there's also, you can go there and get my whole complete Southwestern College animation class. If you're interested in Adobe Animate, there's the whole 20 videos on how to do animation. And it's all for free. Where, where are all these videos stored in? Why don't they run out of room? YouTube has a, a campus full of computers, servers, where all of these things are being stored, running 24 hours a day, and it's a good question. Why, why, don't, why don't they run out of space? They, they just want people to continue to use YouTube, click on the ads, make the money, and all of that. And uh, they put out this product for free, but it's just like TV, over-the-air TV. You plug in your antenna, you watch TV for free. You just have to live through, suffer through the commercials. YouTube is like that, too, in that, well, all of this is free, but there's going to be ads, there's going to be commercials. And either the creators get money or YouTube gets money, and that's how they keep going. Okay, so if we um, if we look at the examples here of these various videos, hey, we notice how they all have a little thumbnail. The sizes of the thumbnails vary. It could be this big of a preview. It could be this medium size, this small size, or this micro size. So I've mentioned about you need to create thumbnails to catch your attention. That's another part of getting found. Yes? They scale. They will get smaller. So the default here is uh, I want to pick the right spot of my video to select it. And this is the smallest it gets, really. So you get a preview of it here in the smallest. Here, I pick one of the random points that it shows for me in the, in the video to pick as a thumbnail. But notice in really small print here, your account isn't eligible for custom thumbnails. Learn more. Well, I mentioned previously that there's a process called verification. Once you verify that you're you know, a real person and will use YouTube correctly, then you have a new option for you to upload a custom thumbnail. And that's what I recommend. That's what I've got on here. There's no shot in the videos over here with this text appearing. 
exactly like that. That's something that I made in Photoshop. I, I took a photo of the item and then I wrote the text. And because these ones are some of the older ones, I broke my own rule about be careful about if you put text, it's going to get cut off at some point by the time, the length of the video. So I'll put these notes there in a moment. But the idea is these thumbnails are also going to be um, other another way to promote. And some of them will be very small, so you can't really see that that's me with one of the important people uh, in the world of magic. And um, this one, you can kind of get a sense of it. But over here, you're going to see it in that size as well. So crafting a thumbnail that catches attention at these various sizes is also an art and a science. Yeah. Is the verify under uh, settings, and is there a downside to verifying, like spam? Or there's, there's, I think, no downside at all. It's all upside. You get a lot of features that are not active if you're not verified. And you'll find it right in here, in your Creator Studio. Uh, in your channel, channel here, status and features, there's just a little verify button. I've never seen any negative side to verifying. It's all upside. It's you get this feature and this feature and this feature and this feature. So I would really do it. Can you have that? Yes. So let's say here first, you or craft a custom thumbnail. I'll do verify in a moment. Uh, I craft a custom thumbnail that catches attention, but think of the various sizes it will exist in, so don't make it too cluttered. You can only add custom thumbnails if you're verified. Verification is under Creator Studio. Channel, status, and features. You get many great features for verifying so do it ASAP you get the ability to make videos longer than 15 minutes you get the ability to make these custom thumbnails you get the ability to monetize make money off of YouTube which we'll get to a little later so it's not that complex at all it's just gonna ask you to verify your email and things like that and I have not seen any downside to it So, yeah, thumbnails. Oh, one more thing, thumbnails. Uh, there is, be careful, there is some amount of dead space at bottom right where the time code, or where the length of the video covers the image. So don't put in anything very important there. And again it ranges because on the, the really small size, it's covering a lot of this right here. I can't read that word right there. It looks like education. It's not, but it's covering it. But when it's on the medium size, that's a lot smaller. So it less. When it's the big preview size like that, it's the time code is in a different area now, so it won't even matter. But people, when when you design a uh, a thumbnail, you you have this whole size. You think, well, I'll put a lot of content. But look at this from a distance. If you see my paper here, you can't read that. So imagine that you've designed your thumbnail, and when I'm looking at it here, I can read it. But if you're 
just a few feet away from me, you can't. It's too small, it's too cluttered. So uh, don't make your, your, your thumbnails too cluttered. Save that. Uh, we'll take our first break. Uh, there's also other other features here in YouTube to really help you get found and views and all of that, likes and such. So we'll uh, we'll take our first break. It's about 10:50. We'll take a break until 11, and then we'll go on. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, if I wanted to look this class one thing up, take it out just for review. I would actually find it. Look at this. And it's like. All just my days. 